Okay, good evening. My name is Fred Toomey. I'm president of Bedford Port Society. Along with me is Terry Burnett, who is head of Whale, executive director, and Joe Bloom, the architect for this project that we have just completed. Uh, tonight we have it. Whale is hosting a little party to kind of uh, introduce people to uh, the project that we have just recently completed, and that is joining the Mariner's Home with the Siemens Bethel. Uh, while trying to maintain the historic character and fabric of the district. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Terry to let, have her give you a few words about the, this evening's event. So we, um, we started construction about a year ago or uh, so? April 19th, 2016. Okay. <laughs> and um, so it's, we've been working on the project for three years um, as a team. And uh, Wales' part was as a development partner with financing, pulling together financing with the Port Society and doing um, the uh, historic um, qualifications for the historic tax credits the project received. It's about $2.9 million project. And then some. <laughs> and then some um, has a lot of different funding sources so it's kind of complicated to pull together but um, the result has been uh, it's just astounding and beautiful and um, the buildings were actually the Bethel was in danger of not being here in, in a couple of years so the Port Society really truly saved like the most important building in the city so I turn it over to Joe Booth Joe had a lot of lot to do with restoring this uh he pulled a lot of eggs out of the hat <laughs> so i like to call them rabbits eggs. rabbits yeah. that's great and the um, the the design the historic design and that new construction walkway um had to receive local state and federal approval right. so right. joe's design was widely you know just everyone loved it so we did a great job it's gorgeous you can see i think the biggest problem we had facing us is how to combine both buildings together into a complex while living up to the standards of the secretary of interiors which says you can't do additions to historic buildings on prominent elevations that was our biggest hurdle to and we created the the lobby that you see uh, the buildings themselves the mariner's home had never been open to the public in its lifetime so this project really has, has brought uh, a wealth of information to, uh, to the, the public in general as they come through. Uh, I just want to point out oh, yeah. one of the things we kept, which is kind of comical, is that rope. That rope was actually the fire escape. This was actually one of the, um, this was the chaplain's room. No, this was the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard room. The chaplain's room was in the back. But in the event of a fire, they would throw that rope out the window and climb down. We have them on all three levels, uh, oh, well, the two levels, the first one didn't, but uh, so we tried to keep those just for nostalgia. Um, the building itself, we've, uh, we've completely rebuilt this building so it would meet um, the modern standards. Um, the floor structures were all reconstructed, these ceilings were removed, we've, we've uh, brought in air conditioning and tempered air so that it can serve as a museum. Uh, Likewise, the, uh, uh, the Siemens Bethel was uh, on the verge of collapsing. We removed the, the salt box floor and discovered that the, the wood structure was actually just sitting on dirt and completely rotted away. So what a lot of the money that went into the building you don't see because it was really to um, retain the structure and keep it active for another two or three hundred years. So. Um, we think it's a, a wonderful project, and it it's, it's, does a, a great benefit to the, to the city of New Bedford and the Wayland Park. 